Welcome to my 1 to 99 and 120 magic guide. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. This magic guide will be long and filled with a ton of information, so you can find timestamps to whatever part of the video you'd like to skip to in the description below. We will be covering the useful items, useful skills, and other useful guides for this skill. Then we will explain how magic works. Then I'll be giving you guys some basic gear examples. Then I'll be covering the quests that give you magic experience, the low level overview and low level training, levels 1 to 50, the mid level overview, levels 50 to 70 and mid level training, and then finally the high level section which is level 70 to 99 and beyond. Now there are a ton of useful items for the magic skill and I could almost not fit this entire list on screen. I'm quickly going to be going over all of these items so you guys can get a general understanding of each thing. If you want more information about a particular item, I highly suggest going to the RuneScape wiki and checking it out for yourself. So, kicking off with auras, you have various use for auras. You have auras that can heal you, gain you prayer points, and give you extra damage. Some examples of this would be the Vambrosum Penance and the Manacle Aura. The Charming Imp is a useful dungeoneering item which is unlocked from 100,000 dungeoneering reward tokens which can pick up and crush charms for summoning experience. A very useful and must have item if you want to train summoning. A Bone Crusher crushes bones much like the Charming Imp for prayer experience. The Herbicide and Seedicide are similar to the Bone Crusher which crush herbs or seeds for herblore and farming experience. All of these items including the Charming Imp can actually be added to your tool belt for 500 slave reward points. The Kiln Cape which is a reward from the Fight Kiln minigame which I also have a guide on which is a high level combat minigame is the best in slot cape for magic. Yes it's quite hard to get but that's for good reason. The Corruption Blast ability is extremely useful because it's a very powerful AoE bleeding ability meaning it does damage over multiple targets and it bleeds so it keeps hitting. It is however quite an expensive ability setting you back around 17 to 20 million depending on the prices of a mass capability codex which is actually used to unlock it. The Vecna Skull is a useful item because it's basically an endless magic stat boost or super magic potion. The Enhanced Excalibur is a useful item for extended slayer trips because it heals you and it can save you food in the long run. Any Blood Amulet is a must have have if you want to AFK because of the passive healing. I recommend you get a Blood Amulet of Fury if you're going to be getting one because this way you'll have one for all three combat styles, being ranged, magic and melee. Various scrimshaws can also be beneficial for extra damage like the scrimshaw of the elements for magic or scrimshaw of sacrifice which actually gives you 50% more bonus combat experience including slayer experience but at the expense of all your drops because if you're using the scrimshaw you will not receive any drops whatsoever from any combat creature. There are of course also useful summoning familiars that can heal you, give you extra damage, extra accuracy or hold your food and items. Some examples of these would be the Smoke Devil, Bunyip and Steel Titan. And Dungeoneering Necklaces are extremely useful in combination with the Bone Crusher for unlimited prayer and if you have Soul Split you can easily survive and sustain your prayer using a Bone Crusher and a Demon Horn Necklace for example and Soul Split in combination of each other. Now for each combat skill, so melee, ranged and magic, the same skills are useful. Invention, Herblore, Slayer and Summoning. Invention lets you perk up your gear to benefit you during combat and gives you other bonuses. Herblore lets you create powerful potions like overloads to boost your stats and useful potions like super anti-fires or adrenaline potions to benefit you in certain situations. Slayer gets you access to high level monsters that can give great experience and profit, mainly the great experience part because you can really get access to stuff like abyssal demons or dark beasts which are amazing. Summoning lets you summon familiars that hold items, heal your characters or deal damage and give you extra accuracy like previously mentioned at the useful items tab. And finally prayer gives you access to the protection or deflection prayers and curses at level 92, 95 and 99 prayer. Now these will benefit your account greatly because you will get extra damage and with the healing effect of the level 92 soul split curse you can afk a lot of monsters. Okay I know you guys don't want to watch hundreds of videos but I do have a lot of useful guides covering various topics from skill guides, useful pvm abilities, a dps guide for beginners, top 10 pvm unlocks and a magic gearing guide in depth from level 70 and beyond. So if you're a mid to high level player, I recommend you check some of those out to increase your knowledge about the game. And as usual, all of these videos will be linked in the description below. 
So, Magic Explained. Well, the Magic skill consists of two skills, because you can train both Magic and Defense with the Magic skill. The higher your Magic level, the higher damage and accuracy you have. For your Defense level, the higher your Defense level is, the less accuracy or hit chance your opponents will have on you. Now, the higher your Magic level, the better weapons you will be able to equip, so a higher tier Staff, a higher tier Wand and Orb, and so on. The higher defense level, the better armor you can equip, and with that better armor, those opponents have even less accuracy on you because your defense bonus is even higher. Now with magic, you have certain spells, you have air, water, earth, and fire spells, but at level 92 magic, all elemental spells at every tier will do the same damage. They will all be capped at 883 damage. Now your spell damage is actually capped to the tier of your magic weapon. What do I mean by that? Well, that means if you have a tier 90 spell and you're using a tier 80 weapon, you will do tier 80 damage for that tier 90 spell. So there's no point in using a tier 90 spell over a tier 82 spell if you're using a tier 80 weapon. With the exception of using a certain spell type, for example, earth runes on a monster that is weak to those earth runes, because then you'll have more accuracy, not more damage against that particular monster. If you're a stat addict, there are two images on screen that can give you a lot of information about your ability damage and so, but if you're a newer player, I wouldn't worry too much about this. Now because runescape combat is so complex, I recommend you as a newer player use the revolution combat mode that automatically uses your abilities, thresholds and ultimate abilities. If you use the revolution combat mode, you can use the two example low level magic bars on screen. Now these bars will have abilities you may not have unlocked if you're level 1 magic, but you will unlock them later on and it won't take you that long to get there. This is how you turn on revolution combat mode. Press escape, go to settings, then go under the combat tab and choose combat mode. Then tick off revolution mode. Then tick off the three boxes at the bottom that automatically trigger thresholds, basics and ultimate abilities. There's also a common experience tab which lets you choose if you want to gain just defense experience, just magic experience or both at the same time, meaning your experience is actually halved in half magic experience and half defense experience. I did actually note two level requirements for two of the abilities on the action bar because they're quite high magic level, being level 55 for world magic and 45 for chain, but they are very good magic abilities so if you don't have them just yet, let's say you're pre-level 45 magic, just move up every ability. Now every level you get closer and closer to the next tier of spell. You have a strike spell, the lower level variants of the spells, a bolt spell, a blast spell, a wave, and at level 81 you start getting the surge spells, starting with air surge. Now what I recommend you do is just stick to air spells all the way up to level 99 because it won't make that much of a difference like previously explained, unless you're fighting a certain creature which is quite tough, with a certain spell weakness you can whip out a certain type of spell. But for the main part stick to the air runes. Now in the future there might be a change with the weapon diversity update to all the elemental spells but then you should still be fine using just air spells. Now if you're a newer or returning player, you probably have no idea what you should be using for gear. And therefore I've made some gear examples for levels 1 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and levels 70 to whenever you start upgrading. And if you want some more help on that, I do have a full magic gearing guide step by step for level 70 and beyond. Anyways, for levels 1 to 40, you're going to be sticking to wizard robes and a staff of air, which you can easily get. I'll show you how later. Now you're going to be sticking to the same gear because you're going to be killing the same monsters levels 1 to 40. The cost of this build is around 5 to 10k. Levels 40 to 50 you want to start upgrading your gear to split bark, then upgrade your weapon to a mystic air staff. This will cost you around 160k. Alternatively, if you do have more money and it does buy in the grand exchange, you can get yourself Dagon High gear, which is better gear that gives you magic bonus. Levels 50 to 60 you're going to be using mystic armor and weapons. Then for your amulet and ring slot, you want to get one of those. You want to get an amulet of glory and a ring of wealth. In total, this gear is currently even cheaper than the level 40 to 50 gear, being around 70k. Alternatively, if you've completed the Fremenic Trials quest, you can also use skeletal gear. Level 60 to 70, you're going to be using Grafolic gear. For some reason, this is very expensive at the moment. You're going to be using a full set of Grafolic gear and some mystic boots. 
Then for your ring and amulet, you're going to be sticking to the same amulet of glory and ring of wealth. As for your cape, you now want to get yourself a obsidian cape. As for your magic weapon from level 60 to 70, you're going to be using a Tokts Mejtal. Yeah, I cannot properly pronounce that, but it's a tier 60 staff obtained from the Desire Caves and you can buy it off the Grand Exchange, covering more on that later. Alternatively, you can also stick to your Mystic Gear if you want to keep it cheap. Level 70 to whenever you start upgrading, you're going to be using Subjugation Armor, which is going to cost you a bit more than the other gear setups. Also, if you've completed the Roving Elves quest, which I recommend you do because you're going to be needing that later anyways, you're going to be using a Crystal Staff for your weapon and your ring is going to be either a Sears or Berserker ring. For the rest, the gear build is going to be the same and it's going to cost you around 10 million GP. Now, as for your low-level gear, aka pre-level 40 gear, you can easily buy this at the Magic Gearing Shops. One is located in Port Sarum and the other is located in Varrock. These are the two easiest to get to. Otherwise, you should always buy your gear off the Grand Exchange, and if you're an Iron Man player, you'll have to make it yourself. The Grand Exchange is a trading center located around a few places in RuneScape, but for now stick to the one located in Varrock, and to start you must first talk to the Grand Exchange Tutor, and then you'll have access to the Grand Exchange and the banks right there. You can literally buy and sell everything you have, as long as it's a tradable item. Here are the quests that give you magic experience. Some quests will require you to have a search of magic level before you can actually complete it. The recommended quests you should do at a low level to get some magic experience are the Vampire Slayer, Room Mysteries, Demon Slayer, The Grand Tree, and Horror from the Deep quest. You're going to be ending up completing these quests in the long run anyways, so you might as well complete them early on for easy gains. Welcome to the low level training overview. We have a few different sections. We have the AFK, active and other section. Items or boxes in red are for monsters that do not make you profit but do give good combat experience. Boxes in yellow are for monsters that give you common experience and are profitable as well. And the green boxes are for mini games and quests. In levels 1 to 40 you really don't have any AFK options unless you're using aggression potions which as a newer player are way too expensive for you and you should not be doing this as you're going to be spoiling the early game experience and you practicing EOC combat. Levels 40 to 50 you can actually semi AFK bandits and more on that later. As for the active section, well you really only have 2 or 3 choices. You either kill trolls levels 1 to 40, do slayer or kill chickens. Then levels 40 to 50 you can actually kill ice warriors for even better experience. As for other, Shattered Worlds is a very good minigame to train on, especially at the early levels. And the great thing is you can gear up and get food inside the minigame. Or you can also complete quests for common experience early on. Now Slayer is a great way to train combat levels 1 to 99 and it can make you profit, get you charms and give you good combat experience. However, the experience rate varies and at low levels it can be quite annoying, but it's a great way to actually get familiar with combat and the creatures in RuneScape 3. You can start Slayer at the Turrell level 1 Slayer Master in Taverly. Now Slayer comes down to you actually killing a certain amount of creatures for your Slayer Master, returning and getting a new task. If you want more information about Slayer, I highly recommend you check out my full Slayer guide because there's no way I can explain the entire skill in this video. One of the best ways to train levels 1 to 40 are trolls in the Birthrobe Mine. Teleport to the Birthrobe Lodestone and follow the video as seen into the mine. You can actually kill these for around 25k experience per hour, meaning you'll get to level 40 quite fast. What you do is you go inside a room, you clear the trolls in that room with your magic weapon, and then move on to the next room and do the same, because this way you'll get more experience per hour as they respawn quite slowly. The monsters in each room drop a certain type of armor and weapons, so one room drops ranged armor and weapons for beginners, and the others drop magic weapons and armor for beginners, and the other room, the third room, drops melee armor and weapons for beginners. Just so you know, you can easily gear up by just killing a few and picking up the weapons and armor. Armor. They also happen to drop some food as well. Alternatively, you can actually train on chickens for around the same experience rate per hour in the Lumbridge Farms. You can pick up the eggs and feathers and raw chicken and sell those for a bit of money at the early levels. Chickens and trolls are your best bet unless you want to do Shattered Worlds, which is basically the only third option at the lower levels, being levels 1 to 40. Sure, you can kill goblins and cows, but the experience rate won't be as good, and therefore you're wasting your time opposed to killing chickens and trolls for the better experience rate. 
At levels 1 to 50, you can train at Shattered Worlds if you're an Iron Man player or normal player and you don't want to gear up. This can be the same experience power as Trolls and Chickens, but it really depends on how fast you are and how good you are or familiar you are with the combat system. It is located close to the Lumbridge Lodestone in the Lumbridge Swamp. Once you start, tick off the Equip Me and Feed Me option to get free gear and food. This is also a safe and very viable way to train as a hardcore Iron Man player. But if you're a normal player as well, this is a great way to train at the early levels. You also have a reward shop where you can use your Shattered Anima or Anima which you obtain throughout the minigame to buy certain rewards. However, the Anima rate you get at a low level is really low so this is really only viable for the rewards, at least the good ones, if you're a higher level player. But it's still a very good way to get into it and familiar with the minigame as a low level player because it will benefit you later on. Levels 40 to 50 you can actually start training on Ice Warriors located in the Port Sarim Ice Dungeon. These are a solid 40 to 50 thousand experience per hour meaning they are quite fast and they also drop some stuff that can make you a bit of starter money. Don't forget to upgrade your gear before actually coming here because otherwise you won't have very good accuracy. Bring your Mystic Air Staff and Split Bark Armor to these Ice Warriors. It also might be a good idea to bring along some food for extended trips. Levels 40 to 50 you can also start training at the bandits in the bandit camp. However, they are quite tough and you can kind of semi AFK them, but you'll need food 100%. So bring along some food because you will want to stay here for an extended trip as these are very good experience power, being around 60k experience power levels 40 to 50. That's very very good experience for such a low level. Now the location is actually in red on the little map you can see on screen now. If you don't have access to the bandit camp lodestone you have to go there from the Alcred lodestone, then walk to Shantae's pass, pick up some water skins from the shop there or from the grand exchange because it is in the desert and you want to not die of the heat of course, then follow the black line until you're at the red area as seen. If you're still having issues finding this area, I recommend looking up the Shantae's Pass and Al Karid and the Bandit Camp Load Center stuff on the RuneScape Wiki so you get a general idea of where it is actually located for those that cannot use that map. I can understand it might be hard to navigate as a newer player or returning player in RuneScape 3. We have now arrived at the mid-level training section overview. For the AFK section you can still kill the bandits for experience and the higher tier of weapons and armor you have the easier it becomes. You can also move up to the abyss if you wish to for better experience per hour however I will say at a low level or mid level it's still pretty tough without the corruption ability and 70 plus combat stats. More on that later. As for the active section, Slayer is now starting to turn profitable. We have Blue Dragons which are also profitable and a good way of training levels 50 to 70, Infernal Mages and Crocodiles. As for the other section, we still have Shattered Worlds which I'm not going to be covering separately again but it's still a good way to train. And we have the Fight Caves and because of all the monsters in the Fight Caves are pretty much weak to water spells or to magic in general, you're going to be having a good time and it's actually decent experience as a mid-level player as well. And if you're able to survive all 63 waves, you can already get your Fire Cape as a reward. It really isn't that hard in Runescape 3, especially with magic. I do actually have a full guide to the Fight Caves for mid-level players, linked in the description below. Levels 50 to 70, the first profitable option is the Blue Dragons, which are located in the Taverly Dungeon, being around 70 to 100k experience per hour depending on your gear and level. You can make money by picking up the Dragon Bones and Blue Dragon Hides and selling them on the Grand Exchange. They should be around 1 mil GP per hour these days. Now you will require a Dusty Key to get inside if you do not have the agility level to use the shortcut, and I'll show you guys how to get that Dusty Key in just a second. When killing dragons you should always use an anti fire potion or pray magic against the dragons because otherwise the dragon fire will do massive damage and absolutely destroy you. As a mid level player I also recommend you bring along some food because dragons can still hit pretty hard. Now I'm totally going to be reusing the clip I used for my melee guide to show you guys how to get the dusty key. You basically walk around the entire Tavoli dungeon and you go ahead and kill a guard. That guard then drops a jail key which you can pick up and open a jail cell with. You then talk to a NPC and ask him if he knows any places to explore. He will then give you the dusty key to give you access to all the areas in the Tavoli dungeon. Levels 50 to 60 and maybe even 70 if you really want to, you're going to be training on crocodiles in the desert. 
These are located close to the Manifold City, outside of the gates, or close to the Bandit Camp Lodestone where I'm walking from in this video. If you don't have that Lodestone yet, you'll have to walk all the way from the Shante Pass from Al Karid. Now when killing these, keep in mind you're in a desert and you do want to bring along some water skins because otherwise you'll take some damage every now and then from the heat. Now crocodiles are surprisingly good experience at level 50, around 80k experience per hour. And at level 60, I'm sure you can get beyond 90,000 experience per hour because then you'll get access to your tier 60 staff and tier 60 armor, meaning you'll be doing much more damage and just getting more experience overall. I personally really like the music and this area, so it's quite a fun place to train, at least in my personal opinion. Levels 50 to 70, you can also train on Infernal Mages in the Mauritania Slayer Tower. Teleport to the Cannabis Lodestone and follow the video. Outside, there's actually an NPC where you can get a contract from so that you get a little bit of Slayer experience when killing these mages. These only are 60k experience per hour level 50, but once you get a tier 60 weapon and tier 60 armor, the experience rate goes up quite rapidly because you can kill them much and much faster. So yeah, what I personally would do is do crocodiles from level 50 to 60, and then level 60 to 70 I would train on infernal mages if you're going to be training non-AFK. If you do want to AFK however, at level 60 to 70 the Abyss is starting to look like a decent option. It still isn't super AFK yet because you're taking way too much damage as a low level player, but once you get to the high levels it really becomes AFK. However, at level 60 to 70 you can start training in the Abyss for 175k XP per hour. There are two main training spots in the Abyss which I cover in my full Abyss guide linked in the description below, but because you're a mid-level player you can actually stand towards the side and still get a decent experience rate without taking in one of the two higher level spots for the higher level players. But at the end of the day, if you do want to get good experience, you will have to use those spots and it will be quite tough for you at your defense level. But what I recommend you do is pray melee and bring along a lot of food and you'll still be banking a lot. But this way you can still last there for a decent amount of time. And yes, I am aware my stats are drained to level 50 and I'm using a tier 50 weapon and armor in the abyss, which I recommend you don't do because it's really just too much effort for too little experience. At level 60, it becomes decent. Now from levels 50 to 70 you still can train at the bandit camp for around 75k plus experience per hour depending on your gear and stats. It gets easier and easier because your gear and defense level is higher and you can last for longer and AFK for longer so it's still a good option to do if you do not want to put in too much effort into training. So that's why I'm putting it at the mid level section as well. Now let's move on to the high level section. Welcome to the high level training section. This is the section for level 70 to 99 and beyond. There are a lot of monsters on screen now and for some of the monsters I do actually have separate guides if you want more information linked in the description below. Now, for the AFK section we have Abyssal Demons which are profitable and insane experience and good charms as well. We also have the Abyss which is the well known AFK area, very easy to get into. Firewatchers being pretty much the perfect way to train for Iron Man but also for main accounts giving you fire making, farming, prayer and common experience and a bit of profit. Armored Zombies being an alternative to the Abyss, Corrupted Scorpions, profitable because all of the drops, normal drops that is, are actually automatically dumped into a chest if you toggle it to which is very good for AFK money making. Dagonoffs being the perfect way to get magic experience and crimson charms at the same time for your summoning gains, being level 99 or beyond. Of course, spiritual warriors, which are very good money per hour in your personal slayer dungeon or in the Zamrak encampments. And Muspas, which we won't be covering separately, but they're also a good, profitable money making method that's worth mentioning. Then for the active section, oh boy, Elite Dungeons 1 Token Farming, aka farming the mini bosses for tokens. This is insane experience per hour. Elite Dungeons 1 Token Farming is around 1 million experience per hour in magic. And you also get over 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens per hour as well if you're in a good duo or trio. That's insane if you ask me. We then have farming Elite Dungeons 3 all the way up to the first boss and then restarting the process being around 1 to 1.3 million experience per hour in magic. Yeah, that's actually ridiculous, but it's insane experience per hour and I'm going to be covering that later. Then we have three methods which I will only just be mentioning, being Slayer, which is profitable at the higher levels, Frost Dragons, which you can actually do with magic as well, and if you have the upgraded Bone Crusher, aka the Bone Picker, you're going to be having a good time at Frost Dragons, and Dark Beasts with or without a cannon are also an option for you for magic training. But because of Elite Dungeons 3, these methods are kind of irrelevant now, you're better off doing Elite Dungeons. As for the other section, we have bossing methods like Elite Dungeons 2 to make you some money, which are great to do with magic, 
Krill and Grador both being good bosses to train on with magic, and Krill being quite AFK. And then we have the Shattered Worlds, Fight Cauldron, and Fight Kill minigame, which I all have separate guides on for a high level player, which are great common experience and have great rewards. The Fight Cauldron is good if you're an Iron Man player, the Fight Kill is good if you want the best in slot cape, being the Kiln Cape, and Shattered Worlds is good if you want to unlock extra PVM abilities and other useful things. Now, that was a crap ton of information, let's move on to the separate sections of the high level training methods, shall we? So since this is a 2019 guide, I'm going to be starting off with the newest and best way to train magic. It's farming elite dungeons free mobs all the way up to the first big boss, then repeating that process. This can be 1 to 1.3 million experience per hour, this can be done solo, duo or in a group of 3. The Shadow Reef, aka Elite Dungeon 3, is located on the Dungeoneering Skills Island, being the Aemonheim, or however you pronounce that. You can get there by using your Ring of Kingship, then going to the boat located on the map. You can easily just look it up on the bold map, or just go to your in-game map and see where the entrance is. It isn't that hard, but this is incredible. Absolutely incredible experience power. Like, this is, this is really the pinnacle of magic training. I mean, if you use a Scrimshaw Sacrifice here... You could theoretically almost get up to 2 million experience per hour without double experience weekend. How crazy is that? And if you find the occasional mini boss, you even get some dungeoneering tokens as well. This is definitely one of the best ways, if not the best way to train magic in the game right now. Another great way to get magic experience and dungeoneering tokens is by doing Elite Dungeons 1 mini boss farming. This is easily over 100k dungeoneering tokens per hour if you're doing this in a good duo or trio, and a solid 850k to 1.05 million experience per hour. That's a very good experience rate and a massively fast token rate. So this is this is even a thing you can do at lower levels because Higher level players bring along lower levels to do this. Recently, I actually took someone in my Discord together with Plebshot to do this, and we got him for levels 81 to like 85 magic, and got him a Charming Imp and a Bone Crusher, so like 140k Dungeoning tokens, all in one hour. That's incredible. This is, again, one of the best ways to train magic in the game now, and I highly suggest you get yourself a clanmate or a higher level friend to take you along, because solo it is a bit slow, but still very good experience per hour. Now, if you're wondering what kind of crazy bar I'm using here, and this clip is a bit old now, and it was me and Slippy doing some duo. Now, the next method isn't active, and is AFK and much lower experience per hour, only being around 300 to 380k XP per hour. However, this is a great AFK and cheap way of farming Crimson Charms. You can get over 350 Crimson Charms per hour here by using Aggression Potions at the Water Birth Island. This doesn't have very high requirements whatsoever, and you can easily do this with a Bone Crusher and Demon Horn Necklace and Soul Spit. Or alternatively, you can do this by praying melee and bringing along a Blood Amulet of Fury and your Tier 70 Mage gear. I have a full guide on this which I'll link in the description below if you want more information how to get there and how to AFK. If you like AFK and you want an easy thing to get into, AFKing at the Abyss is probably the easiest thing you can do for magic experience training. All you need to AFK here is your tier 70 gear and a blood amulet of fury and you should be good to go. If you're a lower defense level you may need to pray melee to fully AFK but without it it's still semi AFK. In fact, a basic Abyss gear example is on screen now. Again, if you want more information about AF King and the Abyss, please check out my full Abyss guide linked in the description below, because there's quite a lot of information to everything you would want to know. Next up, we have an alternative to the Abyss being around the same experience per hour, but having a bit more requirements, being the Defender of Varrock Quest and Aggression Potions to keep the zombies attacking you. Personally, I would always opt for the Abyss instead of Armored Zombies because of the fact you do not need Aggression Potions to actually AFK at the Abyss, and you can reset the aggression every 10 minutes by walking around the ring. However, with Armored Zombies, you only have to click on your Aggression Potion to reset the aggression, but Aggression Potions are a bit expensive and you won't be making that money back here as Armored Zombies are very bad money per hour. Next up, Abyssal Demons, my personal favorite way of AFK training because of their good experience, good profit, always being consistent, 
and good charms power, being around 200 crimsons power. They do however require level 85 slayer and have higher requirements if you want to fully AFK, but once you do have those requirements, you are absolutely set. Next up we have Corrupted Scorpions or any Corrupted Creature for that matter in the Sovenem Slayer Dungeon. In fact, Scorpions are the easiest to AFK requiring level 88 Slayer. They are much lower common experience power than Abyssal Demons, but they are actually fully, fully AFK in terms of profit. Because all of the standard drops, if you toggle the chest to do so, actually go inside the chest, so you don't have to pick up any loot whatsoever. The only downside is the Feathers of Matt requirement to get a kill. These can be bought off the Grand Exchange and outside of the Sovereign Slayer dungeon though. Next up we have camping spiritual warriors in the Zamrak encampment or doing them in your personal Slayer dungeon. They are very good experience and very consistent money per hour especially if you are using the spring cleaner to auto alk some of the drops. If you are using magic note paper you can also make a lot of money by actually noting the super potions that they drop because they drop super potions quite consistently. These do have kind of high requirements though, especially if you're going to be doing them in your personal owned Slayer dungeon because you have to collect the souls and stuff unless you're using someone else's personal owned Slayer dungeon and you kind of do need a lot of things to AFK them. Curses are recommended, Vampire's Mora is useful, Ghost Hunt equipment is useful, an Intuned Ectoplasmator is useful for extra prayer or just unlimited prayer saving you prayer potions, aggression potions are needed and you know, an Enhanced Excalibur is useful to save food and so on. Next up we have Viawatches, having kind of high requirements because you need to complete the entire River of Blood questline for the Sun Spear and such to cremate the corpses, but once you have all of this stuff, and well you don't need curses per se, but they do help, once you have all the requirements this is a great thing to AFK, you get common experience, you make profit, you get prayer experience, you get fire making experience, if you have a seed inside you also get some farming experience, and this is all around one of the best training methods in the game for total experience. And if you're an Iron Man, this is a great way to get most of your skills to level 99 quite easily by just AFKing. You don't even need aggression potions because fire watches are aggressive anyways. Now despite Shattered Worlds being good experience at the higher levels, it's not something I would recommend you do just for the experience, no. Shattered Worlds is good because of the rewards you can get outside of the minigame, being extra abilities like Bladed Dive and Salt the Wound, which will benefit you in high level PVM situations. It is also a viable way of training Slayer if you can farm enough anima because you can actually buy huge Slayer experience lamps from the reward shop. Since we're already around 32 minutes in this guide, I can't give you guys too much information about Shattered Worlds and I highly recommend you watch my separate guide on this because there's a lot of information to Shattered Worlds. But what you basically do is clear 75% of the monsters on a world and then move through the portal to the next. This is how you keep on going. It's much like the Diablo Rift system. Pretty much until you die. The higher world you are, the more experience you're going to be getting, the tougher it's going to be, but the more anima you're going to be getting per hour as well. The Fight Cauldron minigame is also a viable way of training, however the experience rate is similar to the Abyss but it's an active minigame, very active however. If you don't pay attention you can actually take big tick damage from the glowing plates and you can die quite quickly. However it's a safe death so it's a safe way of training for Iron Man as well, much like the Fight Kiln and Fight Caves. Now the Fight Kiln gives you the best in slot cape, the Kiln Cape. But the Fight Cauldron actually gives you Obsidian Shards where you can make Obsidian Armor With which gives you damage reduction in all of the mini games, including the Fight Kiln making it much easier to do. So I recommend you do this before you actually do the Fight Kiln because the Obsidian Armor is really really good for it. It's also a viable way of getting Herblore and Summoning Experience for Iron Man as you can get a boss every now and then a few times per hour that can give you an Experience Lamp which is 20k XP in any combat skill of your choice including Herblore Summoning and Prayer. So it's an alternative way to training Herblore and summoning as an Iron Man if you want to. And with that being said, that pretty much wraps up this entire magic guide. There are methods I mentioned like Muspa, Frost Dragons and Dark Beasts, but really you're better off doing the other methods I actually explained separately because those are just better to do. There are many, many more options and Slayer tasks will actually show you that there are many more monsters you can kill for okay experience and profit at the same time. That's why I of course included Slayer on the overview. However, this guide is already over 34 minutes long and since I'm not a 3 hour long Marvel movie, I'm going to be concluding this guide and ending it. I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope this video actually helped you out. If it did, I'd appreciate it very much so if you left a like and maybe even considered subscribing to my channel or checking out my other guides to see if you would actually like to subscribe. Because I actually put a lot of effort into my videos and this video is a prime example of that.
Thank you for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.